Hi there, thanks for joining me. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make one of these little mini bunnies using wool and a felting needle. He's also got some little friends as well, so you can make them any colour you like. We've got a little brown bunny, another little tan bunny, and a little white bunny with a pink tail. So they're making up their own little bunny family. <laughs> so for anybody who's not familiar with needle felting, needle felting is when you get wool from a sheep. So this is wool that hasn't been spun, so you can't crochet or knit with it yet. But it has been washed and carded, which means it's sort of pulled through combs to remove the curl in it that you would have had when it was on the sheep. And then you use a special barbed needle. So this is a needle felting needle. And all needle felting needles have little barbs on their shafts. Just trying to see if you can see on the camera where the little barbs are. And these are little jutted out bits of metal that catch the fibres. So as you push the needle through the wall, it catches the fibres and pulls it back through. And gradually, once you stab the wool a lot, <laughs> the wool becomes firm and then you can start making firm figures or structures from the wool. So you basically get your needle and you stab and stab and stab <laughs> lots and lots of times and gradually the wool will become firm. So for instance, this is a bunny, much larger scale bunny that I made before. And this is a bunny made of a similar wool to this. And this bunny would have started off as one of these bits of wool, which I would have stabbed and then made the arms and the feet and the ears and this lovely flower out of different coloured wool. But on this tutorial, we're going to make a little bunny like this. As you see, much different scale to the, to the large one of the flower that I just showed you. So to do this, we get a small amount of this sort of tan coloured fibre. Say so needle felting isn't an exact science. So if you pull off too little or too much wool, don't worry. In this case, I'm just going to pull off about that much wool and then I'm going to fold it so it becomes a bit like a circular shape. And then sort of stab that into place. So I literally just folded the fibres over themselves. And then I'm just going to use the needle just to stab those fibres down. And we're starting off making the body. Just move the bunny into view a little bit more. Now the bunny is approximately, let's have a little measure. So that's how long he is in inches. So what's that? About three quarters of an inch, isn't it? And that's how long he is in centimetres. So he's about two centimetres long, isn't he? So we're looking at the body as about two centimetres long. So don't worry too much, but you can make the bunnies whatever size you like. Now these bunnies are quite stylized. They haven't got any legs on them. I've done them so that looks like their little legs are tucked away up underneath them. But obviously, if you wanted to, you could put little feet on as well. Yes, what I'm doing here is I'm just turning this ball that we're making for his body and then stabbing it with my needle so it becomes nice and firm and becomes the shape of the bunny that we want it to be. Now, I've been needle felting for quite a few years and I do love it. It's like my happy place. <laughs> it's an absolutely brilliant hobby. You sort of forget about all your worries and all your stresses when you're just sat here stabbing a piece of wool. <laughs> and it's wonderful. If you haven't tried it yet, give it a go. I can thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly recommend it. 
So there we go, we've got a little body that's beginning to look a little bit like the bunny shape that we want. So I think what we'll now do is we'll move on to making the bunny's head. So same idea, you get a little bit of wool. And I just sort of fold the wool over on itself and fold it again and again. Because it just makes it easier to start felting if you start folding it. And by folding it, it's sort of almost a ball shape before you start, isn't it? So it just helps a little bit to get it into the shape that you want it to be. There we go, it's already becoming a bit of a circle. And again, we just stab, moving it the whole time so it becomes a more circular shape. And also by moving it, it stops it from sticking onto the foam mat. Now I think the head might be a little bit on the small size. That's not bad. So we just keep on using my needle to make this head a bit firmer. The firmer you make it, the smaller it will become though. That's the only thing. So it might be the head's becoming a bit small now. So what I'll do if it is, I think that's a bit on the small side, is I'll get a little bit more wool, just pull off a little bit, and then wrap it round the ball that I've already made, just to make it a little bit bigger. You can do this as many times as you need to. You can pull off little bits if you found it was too big. So you need a floating, it's not an exact science, you just sort of uh, go with the feel. A little bit of wool, see how you get on. If you need more, add more. If you need less, it's trickier to take wool off than it is to add it. So it's best to do too little than too much. But equally, you can actually pull it off if you needed to. You can even cut it. <laughs> so uh, I've been known to cut some of my pieces, like cut a head off, <laughs> cut a bottom off, that sort of thing. And then if something ends up being too long, you sort of uh, cut a bit off of it and then sort of uh, felt over the top. So, so it's very forgiving. And then I'm just gonna squeeze the head a little bit. And what you can do as well is you can actually sort of shape the wool a little bit with your fingers. So bunnies have got sort of like little pointy noses, haven't they? So what I'm doing here is I'm just using my fingers, to make a bit of a pointy nose to this piece of wool. And uh, I didn't want the back to go pointed, so so I may nail sort of dug into that a little bit. And we'll offer it up and see whether or not we look anything like a bunny. And I think the body is still a little bit soft, so I'm just going to use my needle. Oh, sorry, I've just caught myself there <laughs> with the needle. I'm just going to use my needle to firm that up a little bit. As you probably noticed by myself stabbing myself there, the needles are sharp, so you do have to be careful when needle felting. You do have to keep an eye on what you're up to. You can use finger protectors. You get like leather finger protectors that you can wear while needle felting. I quite often do wear a pair, but I won't wear them for the video because it makes it difficult for you to see what I'm up to. But also beware of the leather finger protectors that are not infallible and you can actually put a needle through the leather protectors too. <laughs> so you do just have to be a little bit on the careful side. So always keep an eye on what you're doing and don't look away. There we go. I think we're getting a bit firmer there, aren't we? So that's nice. Difficult to Describe firmness in a video. And that's uh, getting on to being probably almost like, you know, tennis balls are quite hard when you press them. Not quite as hard as a tennis ball, but getting on that way. 
and then we could add a little head on the top and become a bunny. Again, I think the head's a bit soft for now, so I'm just going to felt the head a little bit more. I think the head might need a little bit more wool added to it because it's going a little bit flat and I don't want the head to be flat because I want the head to be nice and round. So again, I'm just going to grab a little bit more wool and pop that on the head and just wrap it round so it becomes a bit firmer. Wrap it round so it becomes... With that, I'm just... Wrapping the wool around the head just to make the head a fraction bigger. Now, obviously, we're looking at a very small miniature bunny here, aren't we? So we don't need that much wool to make a big difference to the sizes we're looking at. Obviously, if you're making a much larger piece, you'd be looking at adding more wool to make a difference to the size. But when you're working on something so tiny, a little bit of wool can make all the difference. So yeah, I think that's getting there, isn't it? So let's just offer up the head. I think that's not too bad. I can't remember which side now I made into the nose. <laughs> so I'll just stab. And I think I'll just make that little bit there. Sort of more nosy shape. Let's say bunnies have got those lovely little noses, haven't they? So I'll just make a little bit of a shape to the head. We don't need to worry too much because we can always shape the head once we've attached it anyhow. So I say it's quite forgiving. So if you pop the head on and think, oh, actually, it needs a little bit more wool or it needs to be a different shape, you can just change it while it's on the bunny anyhow. So I think for now, I'm going to pop the head on and see what it looks like. Now obviously we've got two balls that we're now going to try and attach to each other so that's not the easiest thing to do. So what we can do is grab a little bit of wool and we can wrap the head with this wool and we'll just felt the wool into place over the top of the head but leave it loose at the bottom. And then we've got these nice fibres here that we can use to then attach to the body. Turn them around and keep on stabbing. Quite fiddly, sorry. If my fingers are in the way, it's tricky to show when something's this tiny and those fibers just help keep it in place and then you can also then use your needle to go through the head and the body as well to firm those into place let's get those wispy bits of uh, the wool tucked in on his body It's quite tricky doing it while I'm trying to keep my fingers out of the way. <laughs> so my head's gone a bit of a strange shape there. So again, we'll just use my needle and use my fingers to try and get the head back into sort of bunny shape. I'm just folding the front of the bunny to firm him up at the front as well. Ooh, he's alive. He wants to go off hopping already. <laughs> I 
There we go. And we're getting there. So the nose needs to come down a little bit. I'm just going to fold at the top of the head just to make him the nose go down a bit, a bit further because it was pointing up a bit high. And of course, bunnies got quite low noses, haven't they? And there we go. Now, when I was making the other bunnies, I did think by the time I got to this stage, it looked a bit like a duck. <laughs> so don't worry if your bunny looks like a duck too. <laughs> because they kind of do at this stage. And once we get the ears on, they actually do start looking a lot like bunnies. <laughs> so to do the ears, again, we get some more of the wool that we've been using. And you fold the wool in two, and then just start felting the ears. Now you do get different thickness needles. Well, they've got different barb thicknesses on them. This is my trusty needle that I use for most things. However, when I'm doing ears, something that's fine and thin, I find that this needle here is a bit easier. It's got a sh slightly shorter needle and the barbs on it are less pronounced, which means it's less harsh on the wall. So these needles are really good for sculpting, whereas this one's really good for sort of finishing off and doing ears and that sort of thing. So I'm just going to move to this needle don't worry at all though, if you've only got the one needle at home, don't worry at all, just use what you've got. You can do everything you need to with one needle. Just makes it a little bit easier if you've got different size needles for certain tasks. And what you saw there is I'm picking the ear up off the foam, otherwise it becomes bonded with the foam and becomes difficult. So just gradually move it around, pick it up, make sure it's not getting too bonded into the foam mat. And you can also see what I'm doing as well as I'm using the needle to move the fibers around a little bit so I can start sculpting that ear as well. So it's quite handy, you can use the needle as a bit of a sculpting tool. Now obviously it's a very large ear at the moment, but don't worry about that. Again, we can get it much, much smaller. Move it off the mat regularly and then use the needle to bring these fibers in. And then what you'll find is it becomes very fluffy on the back. Now what you don't want to do is turn it straight over and just stab that way because all that's going to happen is you're going to end up with loads of fibers from the back into your mat then. So what I do is I turn it on its side and then just use the needle to sort of stab those fibers into place. So it just sort of tucks the fibers in so to speak. Not really sculpting when you do it like this it's just sort of tucking the fibers in now do be careful when you're doing little ears like this because you've got only a fine piece of wool that you're dealing with and it's very easy to stab your fingers sometimes if you're doing something like this where you want to sort of do the side of the ear it's a good idea to put it between a bit of maybe card and then that stops you from stabbing your finger Alternatively, you can just stab really slowly. And the effect's the same, whether you stab fast or slowly, the effect is exactly the same. And you just keep on stabbing gradually. As you see, if we do it from the side as well, we're making the ear smaller. We're reducing the size of the ear. We tuck those fibers in the back and gradually reducing the size of the ear down so it becomes more of a miniature size. We just keep on felting the ear until we've got it the size we think we're going to want it. You can see what we're doing as well as we're leaving these fibres long on the end. We're not tucking those in. If we tucked those in, we then have to attach a hard end here onto the top of his head, which would be difficult to do. But if we leave the fibres loose, it makes it much, much easier to attach the ears onto the head. See, the ear is still way too big, isn't it? So we just keep on using the needle to reduce the size of the ear down. Now you might be saying, why didn't we use less wool than we did to make the ears smaller to begin with? Well, we could have done, that's very true. But if you use too little wool, what you'll find is that the ear is too thin. And then it's difficult to make it into a structure because you don't have enough wool to work with. 
so I find it's easier to make it bigger than it needs to be and then gradually reduce the size and then you've got a nice bit of wool there to shape into a bunny ear shape. So we're getting to almost the size we want there now aren't we? As you can see we're becoming a nice bunny ear. And of course the next thing we have to do is we have to make another bunny ear. <laughs> It's actually really hard <laughs> making them look similar. <laughs> so I shall probably speed up drawing this part of the video because you're not going to want to see me make another ear. And then I'll see you once I've got two bunny ears that are ready to look at. We've now got two bunny ears that are roughly the same size as each other. So what we're going to do is to make the whites of the ears. We're just going to get a little tiny bit of white wool. And then pop the white wool inside the ears and felt it into place. You just want to fold it very lightly because you don't really want the white coming out through the back as much as possible. You just want the white just to sit in the ear and look like sort of like the inside of a rabbit's ear. If you pop it in the wrong place, you find it's all going a bit low. What you can do is you can use your needle to sort of pull the wool back into where you want it to be. So it was all getting a bit far down the bottom of the ear there and I didn't want it all the way going down there. Because that bit there is not even going to be seen once it's on the rabbit. And there you go. So that one's got the white inside and I'll do the same for this one. So just roll the ball into a very loose sort of ball, not even ball, just roll it a couple of times. And then pop it on the inside of the rabbit's ear. So there we go. So now it's got like the whites inside the ears. So you can put your nail on the wall to keep it into place. You do have to be careful because you don't want to be stabbing into your nail either. So there we go. We've got two little white insides to the bunny's ears. Now the bunny is looking a bit of a strange shape compared to the other one. And it's because he's got too much of a distinguishing between the head and the body, isn't it? it? Makes it look very much like a duck shape. So just put the ears to one side for now. We're just going to add a little bit more wool onto his body here to even that up. So again, you get a bit more of the tan coloured wool and just pop that in situ and stab it into place. I'm just going to go back to my red needle for this because it's more like a structural thing the red is just a bit quicker it just sort of bonds the fibers together a bit quicker than the gold one does as i say don't worry if you only got the one needle just use what you've got it really doesn't matter it just makes certain jobs a little bit easier if you've got different needles There we go, we've moved his front a little bit further there, hasn't he? So his head doesn't stick out quite as far as it was before. And the head's not quite as wobbly as it was, it was a bit too wobbly. It's good for there to be a little bit of a distinguishing kind of line between the body and the head, but not too much, because bunnies don't have a huge 
difference between their heads and their bodies, do they? So say on the side, we've got a bit too much of a difference there between the head and the body. So again, we'll just put a bit of wool and we'll fill up the space there in between the head and the body. I'm going to do the same on the other side. Not sure we use enough wool on that side, so I'll just use a little bit more. My mat might be moving around a bit, so I'll just move it back into position. Just to do that, just wobble around. <laughs> All the stabbing. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's beginning to look a little bit less like a chick, isn't it? <laughs> or duck, rather. <laughs> Okay, so I think that will do for now. So you can always add to it if we're not happy. But I think what we'll do now is we'll pop the ears on the bunny and see if they're the right size. So what do we think we're getting there? The bunny's head's a little bit on the thin side, so we might want to add a bit more to the bunny's head. But I think what we'll do is we'll pop the ears on and then we can add a little bit more wool to the head if we feel as though it's necessary. So you get the ear. And because we've left the long fibres, it's really easy just to attach the ears to the bunny. So just hold the ear in place and then just stab those long loose fibres down the back of the bunny. Make sure it's roughly in the right spot on his head before you put it in, stab it in too firmly because it's quite easy to move them around. So keep an eye on what's going on at the front as well as what's going on at the back. And we'll just stab the ear into place. A little bit of the white is a bit loose there, isn't it? So we'll just tuck the white in there rather than lose it. And we've got a little ear. Come in together. As you can see, it's beginning to look a little bit more bunny shaped, isn't it? And we'll pop the other ear on. I think it's always amazing once you put the ears on these, they suddenly start looking like bunnies rather than blobs. <laughs> Again, we're just stabbing the second ear into place. Those long fibres can go along the back. Let's add a bit more substance to the back of the bunny. Just tuck those in. So, sort of bonding those fibres with the rest of his back. Make sure the ear is going roughly in the right spot to say it's a little bit, you can sort of move them around a little bit. You don't want to like end up with the bunny's ear like stuck here. <laughs> you would have to take it off and put it back on again. Then we're getting there, aren't we? Lovely. But now I do think the bunny's head is a little bit on the thin side. So again, what we'll do. Is we'll get some wool and we'll just add a bit more to the bunny's head. You can sort of see where the ears are bonded with it at the back. And we could have felted those in a bit more, but there's probably no point if we're going to be adding a bit more wool to his head. We can sort of use that wool over the back of the ears to hold it into place. And Just add that ball to the body, to the bunny's head. At the moment, he looks like he's got like a snood on or something, doesn't he? <laughs> so 
there's snub, 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 until you've got all those fibres tucked away nicely. Oh, the air keeps wanting to twist away, so we need to just give that a few more stabs to keep it into position. And the bunnies begin to look like a bunny. So it's nice for the bunny to have a neckline, but not quite as pronounced as it was before. So now we can give the bunny a bit of a neckline, so you've got a bit of a, a line to show where his head is compared to his body. But we don't want it quite as old as it was before, because before it was more like a duck's head on his back, wasn't it? Again, I'm just going to use my other needle for now. Just makes it just a little bit quicker. It attaches those fibres quite a bit quicker. There we go. I think we're beginning to look a bit like a bunny. I'm just going to pop a little bit of fibre in front of his ears just to blend those in a little bit more. So you need a felt it's not exact science you can sort of add take away as you go it's really lovely from that point of view i think we are beginning to look like a bunny now of course bunnies are known for their tails aren't they so we need to get some more of our white wool and make a little tail for him so to do this get your white wool and you just roll it into a ball between your fingers until you get a ball that you think is about the right tail, size for his tail. And keep on rolling. If you found you had too much, you would just grab it and take some off. Like this. If you found you didn't have enough and the tail was too small, you would just add some more wool and we've rolled it. So let's offer that up to the bunny's bottom. And I think that's probably about the right size for our bunny, isn't it? It will go down a little bit smaller as we fold it into place. So let's give that a go. So you turn him round and then we'll just stab the bottom of the tail. I want to stab the top because if we stab the top of it, it's going to go like a flat tail. So you just want to stab around the bottom of the tail bond those bottom fibres <laughs> with a bunny's bottom. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and there you go, he's beginning to look like he's got a little cotton tail there, hasn't he? Cotton tail. On the little bunny. It's quite nice, isn't it? Mine might be a bit on the low side, actually, thinking about it. I might want to raise it up a little bit. So, if you wanted to do that, again, just take it off and pop it a little bit higher. I wasn't really happy with the position of my tail, it looked way too low. So, I've just taken it off. And put it into a different position. It wants to go low every time, doesn't it? <laughs> there we just put that tail into position. That's better, isn't it? It's worth having a look before you stab it in too hard because if you're not happy with its position, you just move it around quite easily. And don't worry if you end up with sort of white strands around the bottom as well. We can always cover that over with a little bit more of the wool, of the tan coloured wool. So there we go. And a bit of a strange shape on this side, not quite round, it's got a bit of a lump out in the back. So I'm just going to use my needle very gently to 
try and shape that into more of a circle. On one side it looks quite nice, on the other side it looks not that much like a tail. So I'm just using my nail to hold it in place while I can give a little pressure up against the needle. Very fine work. There we are, it's not quite so bad, is it? Again, you can just squeeze the tail to be the shape you want it to be. And I think that's just about getting there, isn't it? If you ended up with too much white wool down here, you could always put a little bit of the tan over it to cover it up as well. So there we go. So there he is, he's got his ears. And the ears keep wanting to turn inwards, so I'm just going to felt those so they turn outwards a little bit. So again, you would just push them out and then just use your needle to try and put those fibres in the angle you want them to go. So it stops the ears from coming in on themselves all the time. There you go, that's a bit better, isn't it? I've got some loose fibres around here that I need to sort of just fold into place a little bit more. And they're beginning to look a little bit like a bunny, which is rather nice, isn't it? So again, you can just sort of squeeze the body to make it a bit more the shape you want it to be. I'm going to elongate mine out a little bit. He's gone a little bit squat, isn't he? Do the same with the head. The head's gone a little bit thin. What's quite nice is you can sort of sculpt the wall with your fingers a little bit, so that's quite nice. I'm just going to bring the forehead down a bit. And I'm just going to make the ears a bit thinner on their base. They look a bit thick on their base, I think. I'm just going to make them a bit thinner on their base. Almost there. I think now we'll look at where we want the bunny's eyes to go. Now one handy trick for working out where you want your bunny's eyes is to use two black pins to decide. Now obviously you're not going to leave the pins in and the pins are a bit bigger than the beads I'm going to be using but it gives you a rough idea as to what looks cute. Because obviously if you put the eyes at the front, it's going to look quite different <laughs> to if you put the eyes on the side. Now, of course, bunnies have got eyes on the side of their heads, haven't they? So it makes more sense to put the eyes on the side. But you can put the eyes high or low. And by using the pins, just gives you an idea as to where you think you might like the eyes. But I think that's too low, personally. So I'd probably move them a little bit higher, more like there. And that one there is not so bad. And sort of there, that's not too bad, is that? Make sure they're roughly the same height, which they are. And then to put his eyes on, I just use little beads. So the beads I use are three millimeter black pearl beads. And I've just opened the box upside down, haven't I? <laughs> So I'll grab a couple of these beads and put the rest to one side. Got a stray bead and put them away. And there's my two beads. Now to pop his eyes into place, I would get some black thread. Cut off a bit of thread. And then tie a knot in the end of the thread, leaving quite a bit of thread at the bottom and it all will become revealed in a bit. Just want to tie a couple of knots on top of each other there. This is just a knot to stop it from pulling through the wool while you put the eyes in place. And then you thread your needle 
and then I would come from the back of the neck to where you want the eyes to be. Let's have another little look, make sure the eyes are in the right spot. I think that one there might be a bit on the low side actually. So I'm just going to move that one around a little bit, I think. Probably a little bit better. Might be a bit far back. I might go a little bit farther forward. It's looking a bit, that one might be too far back. So work out where you want your eyes. And then you get your thread. So it's doubled over from where you threaded it earlier. Oh, I've just unthreaded my needle. And then I would come in through the back of the head. This is where the knot will stay that we've just put into the thread and then come out in the hole where one of the pins is. It just means that you know where you want your eye to go. And you can pull it tight and the knot should stop it going through the wall. And then you get one of your little beads that you're going to use for the eye, and thread that onto the needle, and then you're going to pop it through the wall to the other side. So I can move that pin now because I've got my eye in the right position, and then I'm going to go through to the other side. And I'll just remove that pin because I don't need that pin anymore. That saves me from uh, stabbing myself with those pins. <laughs> and there's one eye in place. And we'll pop a second bead on the needle. And then we'll go back through the wall. to the first eye like so and then we can go back through that eye to the back of his neck and then what we can do is we can use this thread that we left at the back of his neck and tie it off that's why I said leave a nice long bit there before you tie the knot then you can just tie another knot in place there to keep the eyes into place. And you can see we've got two little eyes. Just going to tie the thread off and then snip off the strands that we no longer need. And obviously on the back of his neck we've got a little lump of black thread which we don't want. So we'll just use a little bit of wool, cover that over with a bit of wool. Now I guess you could come up to the bottom, the base of the rabbit where it would show even less, but to be honest I find that quite tricky. Coming through the back of the neck makes it easier to visualise where the eyes are going to go. But obviously it's entirely up to you, you can choose to do it however you like. I just tend to go through the back of the heads to put the eyes into place and then I just use a little bit of wool to cover over the thread at the back. So there are my two eyes and my bunny. So I'm just giving him a bit more of a neckline. I know we've already done that, but the trouble is when you're moving them around, the sort of neckline sort of disappears a little bit. I think that eye might be slightly lower than the other one, so I'm just going to use the wool to entice it up a little bit more. And I'm going to felt down on his forehead given that sort of bunny shape on his head. And he's still got a slightly high nose, so I'm just going to entice his nose down a little bit more. And there we go, he's beginning 
Se lo más capaz aquí. I'm just going to give him a bit more of a pointy nose. And swap needles. And there we go. I think he's probably about right, isn't he? And of course, bunnies are known for their whiskers, aren't they? So I think what we're now going to do is pop the whiskers on. So for the whiskers, I'm going to use this tan coloured thread. I'm just going to cut off a little bit and fold the thread in two. And you can fold it as many times as you like. The more times you fold it, the more whiskers you'll have. I'm just going to have two whiskers for now. So I'm just going to thread my needle. And then work out where I want my whiskers. And then pop the needle from one side to the other, making sure Two of the whiskers stay on one side of his head and the other two, what will become the other two, stay on the other side of the head. So, there we go. And then I'm just going to cut this side of the whiskers and then I'm going to trim them down because I think they're a little bit on the long side, don't you? <laughs> don't want them doing too long. And then to keep the whiskers in place, I find the best way to do that is with a little bit of clear drying PVA glue. And the best way to apply PVA glue is with a little cocktail stick. So I would just put a little dab on either side of his nose. And then when that dries, you won't even notice it's there. And that just stops the whiskers from pulling through, otherwise they would pull through from one side to the other. I say once that dries you won't even see that glue. Just going to pop those little fibres in on the back of his head a little bit. So I'm just using my nails to give him a bit more of head and pull his body up a little bit more. And there we go. I think he's now done. And here is our lovely little needle felt eared Easter bunny, just in time for Easter. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, seeing how I made one of these little Easter bunnies. If you decide to make one yourself and you've got any questions, just pop your questions in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can see what I'm up to next. And thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.